Hi everybody, this is Andrew Cuneo. I'm going to be hopping into an arena qualifier plan, I think it's what it's called. It's uh, to get into the arena qualifier. It's going to be best of three, so I'm going to need to go 4-0. I'm going to play uh, this dinosaur pod deck in Alchemy, which I've made a couple videos on. Made a few changes to it. I've got this new card shove aside in place of some other spot removal. It's pretty strong. It's, uh, it's not insane. I've got two copies in the main deck. Uh, outside of that, I think I fooled the lands a little bit. I've added one commercial district because I wanted access to a little bit more regular red mana, not Cavern of Souls red mana, because of some sideboard cards. Namely, I've got four Nahiri's Warcraftings in my sideboard right now. This is because I was struggling against uh, generally white-black decks, but just decks that had... Uh, four Preacher of the Schisms, and then they would have some number of Shieldreds in their deck too, and it, it, that's just really hard for this deck to deal with. Like the 2-4 two, two, four Death Touch was is a just a really tough stat line for my main deck to handle. So that's why I've got all these Nahiri's Warcraftings. I've also have some Haywire Mites in my sideboard. I think that I didn't have those the last time I made a video on this deck, and I kind of realized that this is just the answer to the One Ring that I needed for my deck. Um, I've got Ren and Realm Breakers. Those, these are mostly against people who are just really sweeper heavy, so like Sunfall or Deadly Cover Up is also kind of bizarrely popular in Alchemy. And then I've got one Witch Stalker Frenzy in my deck. This is like another Shielded out, I guess. I'm not sure I really need to have four Warcraft things and a Witch Stalker Frenzy. But I don't know that there's anything else I really want in my subboard. So that's the list. Hopefully we'll get a good run. And qualify for the actual regular tournament. Reasonable hand. So for people who don't know, I entered this with uh, qualifier play-in points. I think is what they're called. I actually saw a post by someone online who didn't realize that uh, if you use the qualifier play-in points... You don't have to pay the gold or gem entry fee. Qualifier plan points, I think it, it's they're worth like 200 gems per point. And this is the only tournament you can use them in, which is kind of why they're, they're pretty bad, really. But, uh,. If you are going to play in these things, you certainly want to use them. So I think that what my opponent is playing is a deck based around this card, Rise of the Witch King, which is from Lord of the Rings. Okay. Maybe they're not playing a Rise of the Witch King deck. I'm not 100% sure yet. Whatever it is, this isn't going that great for me. How many twos down there? I'm not going to attack. I don't want to let them hit me for free with Inti, and I don't really want to trade the Hatcher this turn for the Inti. I guess there wasn't really anything I could do about that, sadly. did not go well. Don't want them to play Crucius for free out of their yard, so... Going to get rid of their graveyard. And hopefully their hand is bad. Which will allow me to buy some time and then get to spawning pod. You know. 
it's kind of cool that Analyze the Pollen is a playable alchemy card. Probably not realistically gonna get to Jakama. I don't I don't even have access to the white mana right now. And Territorial Allosaurus, if it gets to fight until the anti is obviously gonna be pretty good. There's Perilous Iteration is a nice card. That's a good one. So if I fight the Crucius, I can just play this Crucius. So I'm not really in the market for that. Instead... I'll kill the Inti. they wanted to, they could have jumped with this Crucius and played a different Crucius, but that would have made them spend three mana. Makes sense for them not to do that. Are they getting shove aside again? Yeah. So if they shove aside the Ruby, I'll pod the Shepherd into a Wing Maiden Allosaurus, whatever it's called. The 4 5, and then I'll Savage Stomp the Jarsal. If they. So inside the Scale Speaker Shepherd, I'm gonna pod the Ruby and hope that I hit a Tranquil Frillback, which I believe I've got two Shepherds in my deck right now, and uh, one Tranquil Frillback. I guess they, they wanted the Crucius in their graveyard, that's why they did that. It's three. Yeah, maybe that makes sense. So far they've gotten to take advantage of a lot of the value engine of their deck, and my deck hasn't really gotten to do too much of what it's uh, set up to do. But now that it, if, if this pod stays in play, we're going to probably take the game over and kill them pretty quickly, even though they do still have a Crucius. It is a body I could pot into a 1-2, but it's not what that's that likely to uh, matter. Only used one pot hatcher, right? Yeah. I will be casting this Savage Stomp, but I'm going to wait until after I get an attack with the Polani's Hatcher token, because this way, if they have a removal spell to fit, like fizzle the Savage Stomp, I'll get max value. It's weird to me that people put Orcus Bowmasters in the deck. It is kind of good against some things. 
like against Rusko, it makes it so that the midnight clock going off actually kills him a lot of the time. So this is a matchup where I wish I had four shove asides. I don't have to make do with three. Even the Tranquil Thrillback kind of did some stuff. I don't think that it's going to be good all that often. So I think I'll just board one of those out. I do have the Intrepid Paleontologist, which, given enough mana, shuts down the, the Jarsals as well. Well, I'm Warcrafting in my deck. Actually, it might be fine. Maybe try that. This is the kind of... This is a pretty good hand, really. Even though, like, you would want some payoff card, but... Got to, this is a really good removal spell against their deck, and I want to... Turn one Delighted Halflings. Sometimes you'd want to kill their Delighted Halfling, but I think when I have only one removal spell and I don't really have a fast hand, it's better for me to... Just to save my shove aside. So I'm gonna leave up shove aside in case they play Jarsal. I don't want them to play Jarsal and immediately get to cast their own shove aside. Seems like they do not have Jarsal in their hand. I'm gonna continue to leave up shove aside. So even though they did not have Jarsal that turn, they could have Crucius, and I don't really want to let them get a free Crucius either. Or an empty. All things that would be bad. So I'm going to need an untapped land to play a Tali next turn. I drew so many Restless Ridge Lines, but it'll be okay. They probably don't have all that much to do. they had drawn a removal spell, they probably would have cast it. Maybe not. Looks like they have broken the throat. It's a unfortunate, I guess. Jarsal targets, it doesn't choose on resolution. Uh, but on your turn, you may cast a spell with mana. No, it does not target. That's a bummer. So, they're gonna get to play shove aside, and I'm gonna eat a go for the throat in the yard. Yeah, I really went about as bad as it could. I could still easily win this game though if I draw an untapped land and I can cast a tally, or if I draw a spell that impacts the game. They, they just pitched a go for the throat. Sure, that was a good decision on my part. And I get they wanted to use Crucius, but 
Go for the throat had to be one of the best cards they could possibly have in their hand. That was a good one too. this Atali, because they're going to shove aside Lanor Loam Speaker. I'm surprised they wanted to make that trade. Harry's Warcrafting looks pretty good there. thinking if I want to tap both my delighted halflings just in case I hit the wingbane, whatever it's called, wingbane vanthosaurus, so I could immediately savage stomp. I think the answer to that's no. I'd rather have this just be able to block, actually. You're gonna need something pretty good to beat this board. Hopefully they don't have to go through. This is why I attacked first, to get them to actually use to go for the throat. Is that all four that they've drawn this game? One, two, I think I exiled one, so they've drawn three of four. Atali out of my yard to start. Let's see what they're up to. Bonnie's oh, Hatcher, nice. gonna leave the, uh, the paleontologists untapped just so I would have mana to exile something from a graveyard but the fact that I hit the hatcher and I have a hasty Atali means that I think I probably have lethal if they don't have a spell nice Ooh, a 
I'm on the planet of Turn One's Lighted Halfling. This is the stuff of dreams. some sort of beat down deck. Hmm. I think I'll start by playing the Shepherd and see what that finds. They probably have what's the two one ones that you flash into play. It's probably what's in their hand. I think I'm just going to play Tranquil Thrill back to block with. Assuming they don't kill either of these creatures, I'm still going to be able to play the Carnosaur next turn. Uh, so I didn't need to play the Ridgeline. And this just means that I'll... In the event that they don't have Knight Errant of Eos, or whatever the Convoke thing is called, this will save me two damage. They usually don't have very many targets for Tranquil Throwback. They might have the uh, the three mana Anthem, War Leader or something. Should be a little bit sad if they had that. Generally though, this matchup is, if you can just preserve your life total and get to the point where you're playing your expensive cards, you're gonna beat a lot of their hands. You won't beat like the absolute best hands where they play two of those knights really fast, but you'll beat the hands that don't have the knights and they're just kind of stuck playing with small creatures. Alright, that's fine. This matchup is why I have these stalwart spear tails in my sideboard. And... I think I want all that stuff. Throwbacks, like I said, don't really do much. I think I'm going to board like that. This is a matchup where you want to have a low curve. And you don't need like the super late game of having multiple Atalis. Also, it... This is not a matchup where you want to draw multiple pods, generally. Like, one pod is probably going to be all you have time for. And if you get to the point where you've drawn two pods and you're using them both, you're, you're like, you would have won by so much already, it doesn't matter. And they're, they don't have very many cards that are going to get your pod off the board or prevent you from getting it into play if you draw it. Mm. I don't think this hand's good enough. It's, it's actually kind of, it, it's close. Like, if one of these paleontologists was a delighted halfling, I definitely would keep, but it wasn't quite enough. Okay, so I'm going to pitch a land. It's a little bit of a tough decision. I think it was between a land and a paleontologist. Maybe it was a mistake to play the shuttle side. Maybe I should have just put a good one every time I play. I don't know the exact name of the night guy, but they don't have it, so I'm happy. Damage to 
tank. Obviously, I was going to attack and use the spear tail, so that thing's going to die anyway. Spear tail is very good against hands that have a lot of uh, make two one ones. Is this is a control deck or some sort of artifact based. Deck? It's an artifact based deck. Whoa, what's this dude doing? Where'd this guy come from? Surely there, there has to be a better card than this. I mean, maybe they're going to bubble smuggle me out, but... I, I, this guy's not it. I think I'm going to get naturalized. I'm a little bit worried that the Vanasaur is just going to die to, I don't know, get lost or something. To a Warfox bodyguard. Okay. They're going to hit me for some, but this isn't going to go well for them. Oh, man. It's a pretty good explore getting to get rid of a bubble smuggler. No, I think I'll just chill out. I'm going to naturalize the schooner probably. More War Fox bodyguards. I'm going to continue with my game plan of ignore the bubble smugglers. I guess I'll get another naturalize. I know, it seems like they're pretty doomed. Short of having, I guess, some sort of sweeper. Wingman Vantasaur is really good when uh, you're able to resolve the the Savage Stomp or the naturalize. Like, obviously, so it can be a little bit clunky, especially if they have instant speed ways to prevent you from resolving, um, what's it called, Savage Stomp. But if you if you actually get the Savage Stomp, or if there's a juicy target for you to naturalize, this is just a great card. I'm doing this now in case I hit Polani's Hatcher. Oh no, opponent. <laughs> That's not how that works. Opponents had a rough game. They needed to wait for the Atali to be in play.
even then I probably would not have been close to enough to save them. I don't know what this card does. This is from Aftermath. It's not an alchemy only card. You can play spells with flash or flying from the top of your library. Okay. This makes the bubble smuggler even more bizarre. Like you would think if you're gonna put this in your deck you would find something that you could play instead of bubble smuggler. Truly bizarre. So I'm gonna board and shove aside and lithomantic barrage. I guess they do they had I saw two schooners, so I guess I'll leave two tra tranquil fill backs in my deck. One of the cards I board out when I just want to make my deck more interactive is I just board out these rubies. Um, the rubies are really good when you want to just have like a linear ramping into your expensive cards, but once you can board in some more interaction, you don't need quite as many mana sources, I would say. I don't think I want any of this other stuff particularly. This hand on the draw... I was going to mull, but I think now that they're mulling, I should keep the logic being like that they're, they're, given that they've mulled at least once, their hands are going to be obviously weaker on average. So I can afford to keep a hand that's, uh, I mean, this hand wasn't really like, it was, it was a functional hand, it was just slow. So keeping it in spots where the risk of getting run over is lower, I think it's completely reasonable. Probably about to start getting Warfox bodyguarded. Oh, what's this thing? It's a bad version of this thing. Oh, that's a good card. I didn't want it though. I think my plan is next turn, I'm just going to play the Carnosaur, unless they leave all their mana untapped. If they have all their mana untapped, I might try to just cast two spells instead. I probably don't need to worry about sweepers against somebody who's filled their deck with all these tiny creatures, nor fox bodyguards. Might be getting tide bindered here. Or I guess it could also be a Warfox, just Warfox bodyguard. You'd think that they would have, if they had Warfox bodyguard, they would have just taken out a. Uh, Alright, tide binder, and they timed it right this time. Not, like, insanely good, but still fine, I guess. Do I care about these flyers that are hitting me? Probably not all that much. I think I'll just take this thing. I am actually, I'm gonna channel this and take out the two power flyer, I think. Or at least see what, what they're planning to do with their mana. Plan was worth five. Oh, 
and something you did. This definitely qualifies something good. Probably, I probably should have attacked before I used pod, but I don't think it really matters. Particularly in this situation. Do you have anything good to paleontologist back? I have a carnosaur. So far I haven't had to play against an Arusco Dex. This is looking like it's gonna be a Rusko deck. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's I don't know what kind of deck would be just all about playing Rona. Guess I'm gonna find out. I don't think that there's like all the stuff you can't do the slow gurk deck in alchemy because the channel lands aren't part of alchemy so who knows what this opponent's got cooking i think we're about to find out seems like there's some sort of reanimation strategy so i wasn't sure what i was going to do with my Turn, but I think the answer now is I'm just gonna tranquil frill back them. Like the paleontologist in place, so maybe I don't need to do that. back rather than just like preemptively playing it. The uh, There's a, a four mana reanimation card called Rise of the Witch King that they would need green mana but they could obviously have green in their deck. Um, it also just isn't that potent to like throw back them right away. I have no idea what this card they just played is. Draw a card, then discard a card. Transform. There are four more permanent types of cards in your graveyard. What do you get when it's transformed? You get a land that taps for a lot of mana. Good news is... There's probably some really juicy targets in their deck for me to Atali into. It's another one of those things. One of the reasons I like this deck is because there is a lot of just built-in anti-graveyard stuff going on. So I could frill back their yard and this thing. Or I could just play a Tali. And this transforms... doesn't untap. I think I'm gonna play aggressive lane. I'm just gonna try to put a tally into play. I probably would have played differently if they had made their fourth land drop. But I'm not that worried. 
they're gonna do something absolutely devastating this turn if they've only got three lands in play. Maybe I'm wrong. <coughs> Ooh, okay. I don't know that I could have actually done anything about that anyway. My Atali, they hit my other one. That's kind of rude. And they can almost definitely use the Conspiracy Unraveler. I guess I chose wrong with the reenact the crime. So I'm thinking about that card. Now that I see what their deck does, I think had I played really cautiously and just always left up the paleontologist, it would have been really hard for them to win. Now it's probably going to be quite hard for me to win. Although they might come, they might be about to deck themselves. They're going to deck before me. I don't know how many Oracle of the Office they have in their deck. They could put a Time Twister back in their deck. Basically. This is kind of an interesting game, I guess. They hit a ruby, so they can savage stomp. It's kind of savage and stomping. <laughs> this is a comma they got off of. Uh, My skill band shepherd. What are they trying to do with it? Okay. Oh, they they want to reanimate their own Oracle of the Alpha, it seems. This has been a crazy turn. I, when I said I was going to play aggressively, I said I didn't think they could do anything all that bad to me, but this has really been uh, quite bad. Like, remarkably bad. I don't think my deck is capable of uh, coming back. What is... I want to read how this reenact the crime card works. It does target. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's probably enough. I'll definitely bo be boarding in. I'll be boarding up to four tranquil frillbacks. They did have the uh, what was it called? Aronas, but I don't think I want a card that only hits Rona. 
I don't have very good answers. If, if they manage to get a tracksuit into play, like it's probably going to beat me. I need to be really far ahead before that happens to have any chance. They're probably going to board in some interaction, but I think this is probably my best configuration. Most of my sideboard cards really just don't do anything in this matchup. Is this hand good enough? Not really. This hand's much worse. Mull to five and then get this is effectively thought seized. It's not a good way to start a game. Maybe it's a tough choice for them, though. They are taking their time. I was assuming they were just going to take Paleontologist and I was going to play Spawning Pod and just be playing off the top of my deck for the rest of the game. Maybe they're afraid of the Spawning Pod. Their hand is just all phantasmal extractions. Need something like that to have a shot. This ain't good. They discard Breach and reenact it this turn. Get ugly. We all have things we'd rather. Or they can reenact Atraxa. Or they could play Rona. Right? It's about as good as it could go for me. Space. I guess I don't need to be in a hurry to get a wing band Vantasaur. So I'm just going to get rid of the graveyard. It seems like the way their deck works. Like, getting rid of their graveyard there doesn't actually do that much for me. Because it's really based on reenact the crime. Or they get the seven mana and they play breach, and I guess that like them not having that attracts them maybe that occasionally matters, but probably not. Uh, I think I'm just gonna keep getting naturalizes. I don't think Savage Stomp does as much. Especially they've already they've jumped with one Rona and they obviously don't have another run in their hand or they would have played it.
question is, how worried do I have to be about deadly cover-up? I had no idea that you could do that. You could just reenact your opponent's cards. That's kind of crazy. Oh, they can't play the naturalize. I was like, why didn't they naturalize my thing? And the answer is because they don't have green now. Really cracked the code on that one. What the hasty guy. This has been a weird game. I think I may have played myself into a loss. I'm playing too cautiously. If I pod and get a Vantasaur... Fight... Doesn't kill them. They're really likely to breach, I think, next turn. Guess not. They're dead. Paleontologist continues to, I think, be one of my key cards in this matchup, so I'll happily keep this hand if it turn one halfling and two paleontologists. And I didn't see any sweepers from their deck. They saw a decent amount of their amount of cards that last game. I guess they no, if they they got to the point where they would have cast Deadly Cover up if they had had it, because they had five mana that last turn and played Lorian Revealed instead. Yeah, my mana is awkward. I cannot cast two spells this turn. So I will play one Paleontologist. they don't have land reenact the crime something good to discard well they don't have something good to discard so that's a good start
I'm going to just play this real slow. So far I haven't seen much in the way of ways to, to beat me if I just play my hand out slowly. I guess they have go for the throats for these, but I think it's pretty hard for their deck to function as long as I have a paleontologist in play. I guess I don't really care about any of that stuff, but whatever. If they have a sweeper in their deck and they play it, it's going to be bad. It also isn't going to be great for me if they just flip the Rona. And that wouldn't be unbeatable, but that would be a little bit problematic. I should be exiling permanent cards from their graveyard. So just being able to cast a track so that ain't good. To reenact the crimes in the graveyard. I think they're just playing to get to the point where they cast the tracks or a breach. Conspiracy.
guess I played too slow. I would have probably lost to reenact the crime if I hadn't played so carefully, but I'm just getting to seven mana is certainly no way I can lose. They can time walk. I'm dead. Well, that was a cool deck to lose to, at least. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll probably make one or two more attempts to get to four wins, and if I do, you'll probably see another video of day one. Thanks for watching.